Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be talking about the five requirements of Euclid and try to compare them against the utter drivel known as zermelo frankel axioms. So what the absolute morons of the last 150 to 200 years have done is they've cast aside these five requirements, which by the way, can be proved systematically for nothing. They do not require belief. They do not require something called an axiom. Uh, and there's no such thing as self-evident because uh, if that were true, that means that those concepts are well-formed and they exist outside of the human mind. Therefore, their understanding of axiom is in fact contradictory to the way they, they think about it. Okay, so they think it's a self-evident uh, fact, but it's not self-evident because you have to think about it, right? Of course, I'm of the opinion that well-formed concepts exist independently of the human mind or any mind, but I'm going to place a link to an article on that and let you uh, study it. Um, that's not the purpose of my discussion here. But what they did is they took the utter garbage on the right-hand side and replaced the light and beauty of Euclid's elements, which you see on the left here. This, these five requirements are what actually gave you everything you have in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The utter crap that you see on the right-hand side came to you out of the mind originally of George Cantor, and his deluded followers, David Hilbert, and all those other morons, Zermelo, Franco, uh, Freig. Uh, I mean, I can, the list just goes on and on. They're all an incorrigible bunch of ignoramuses and non-mathematicians because set theory has absolutely nothing to do with math mathematics. Set theory is not mathematics. It never was, and it never will be. And it will never replace the true foundations, which are Euclid's elements. So what are the true foundations? These are not axioms, by the way. And study my article if you want to find out. The first requirement, not an axiom, it's called etima in Greek. Okay, And the collection of them, or all five of them, etimata, which has nothing to do with the word axiom. Okay, So one, a shortest distance or a straight line can be taken between any two points. And by the way, contrary to the syphilitic fools of mainstream mathematics academia, each requirement is built on the previous one, okay? So, two, any shortest distance can be diminished in length and therefore by inference can be extended. Three, a circle is a special distance such that from anywhere on the path, the shortest distance or a straight line to the center is the same straight line or same shortest distance. And if that said straight line is extended, it must meet the path again. Okay, so can you see how three uses two and two uses one? You moronic mainstream mathematics professors and lecturers and teachers, you're all incorrigible idiots. Let's see how number four uh, builds on all the previous three. It's, all the previous three. It says angles at the center are subtended on the same arc, or angles at the center that are subtended on the same arc are equal because of circle symmetry. There's a lot to this, and if you study my my uh, article, you'll see how I build everything up from nothing, even before one. The, there's actually a prologue which I've written, which has to come before the five requirements. Therefore, all right angles. Uh, are equal for any size circle. And finally, the fifth most misunderstood requirement, not axiom, not postulate, or the utter garbage that you hear those fools tell you in classes, it says that the sum of cointerior angles on the same side of transversal and lying between two lines parallel or intersecting is always a constant value expressible as a proportion of the right angle. Okay, so they all build on each other. Unlike what you've heard those Abel Prize fools and uh, Fields Medal fools tell you there's nothing about axioms here. Now let's look at the utter crap that we see on the right-hand side. So we go to 
uh, the internet and we look at the Zermanov, 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 I can't even pronounce that crap, Zermanov Frankel axioms. So the, look at the lead here. It says the Zermanov Frankel axioms are the basis for set theory, okay? And in the following, that stands for exist and that stands for, for all. And this stands for is an element of, well, you know, even in the mainstream, they contradict each other because look here, it says it stands for an, is an element of. But if you look at this guy's uh, video, Frederick Schuller, he says there will be no definition of what he is or of what a set is. Are you shocked? Well, if you're not shocked, you should be moron because you're just listening to your professor and your teacher as if they're telling you things that actually matter, as if they're telling you things that are mathematics. But this is utter bullshit, which has nothing to do with mathematics. It has zero to do with mathematics. Okay, so uh, so so it's, it's here. It's the contradiction. It says is an element of, and the empty set, and they give you the the uh, the operators here implies, and etc. And of course, you have the nine bullshit beliefs which are wrong even from the first one. And I have already created videos on this. I don't even feel it's worth wasting a second on any longer than I have to. Uh, reject this drivel. It's not mathematics. It's not going to help you. It's not used anywhere you can think of. It's utter garbage. And you really are not going to learn anything about mathematics from this utter junk, okay? So if you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber. Tell your friends about it. Follow me on academia.eu. I'll place links to all those things. And donate a few dollars. You know, I don't earn anything from this. And it's hard for me to. to oh, in fact, right now I'm starting to get a pain in my eyes again. I think I've been on a computer a little too long now. So I'm going to stop there and greet you. And hopefully next time I'll have some more information about another juicy topic which will help you to determine what is truth and heresy in mathematics. I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.